Hello. Hello. Well, it's you and me. Yeah. I'll even let you see me for a minute. Ooh. Like wow. I have a short visit. Yeah. Wow. Okay, that was enough. <laughs> By the way, my prescription's ready at Walgreens and it's a lot cheaper. I must have hit my deductible. Yeah. Very exciting. So we're a minute early. Yeah. Hey, you're talking about Rosh Hashanah? Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah. I'm, I'm Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur. Yeah, you were telling me the rabbi that you wanted to say some more things. Okay, you got a pen for me? Yeah, I'll get you a pen and a piece of paper. Yeah, okay. piece of paper. I wonder what I'm doing. And here's a pen. If you want, I'll move this out of the way. You don't need a mouse. I'm fine. Where's my mouse? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, there's, there's, this is my real report. Michael Bolinsky. Just somebody that's on there. Oh, uh, he's the uh, rabbi who's going to be talking. Yeah. Now, who's ever talking now, we hear you. Oh, okay. So that's fine, but only say nice things about me. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to say nice things? I have to say nice things about my husband. <laughs> <laughs> that's what my just, wife just asked. It's <laughs> Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, I have to. <laughs> 44 years. I'll keep them. <laughs> right, 44 long, hard years. Right. All right, I'll wait one more minute, then we'll start. Um, I don't think I'm muted still. I don't know. No, I don't mind if you're not muted. Just be this, you know, just be careful what you say. Hi, Nelson. Uh, now you're connected. Hi, Nelson. Hello, Michael. Okay, just a reminder, um, everyone should have, there was a link provided in the announcements for the Yom Kippur at Home Tfila guide. Um, it also included, uh, I think, uh, Sukkot was attached as well, I think. Um, and and uh, in fact, uh, Rosh Hashanah may be there also for all I know. Uh, the people who did it eventually put all three into one. So, but we'll be focusing on, uh, on Yom Kippur tonight. Um, so as we did this last time, um, I think was everyone with me for Rosh Hashanah? 
when we did this? Well, you're muted, so that's okay. Um, so I think uh, we'll do like we did last time. I'm gonna begin with an introduction and then we'll, as to frame what the issues are in terms of davening um, for Yom Kippur and particularly davening at home, not in the context uh, of a minion. Um, feel free to go off mute. If you're on mute, feel free to go off mute and to ask any questions. Um, and we'll stop uh, just before eight because I wanna do my riv, um, and 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 slichas with the minion at uh, at Skokie Valley. So I will have to switch uh, Zoom addresses. So um, I'd like to begin with an introduction, and then we'll go into more of the particular details. But I want to turn to one fila to one prayer. Uh, it's one of the piyutim. It's one of the uh, oh, piyutim. One of the poems associated with slichot. Oh, so it's a uh, one of the slichot may be a better way to refer to it. Um, and it's on page uh, 102 in the Art Scroll. It's on page 521 in the Birnbaum, and it's on page 125 uh, in the Koren. So I have, um, looking at some um, material from Rav Soloveitchik, uh, it was actually, they put on uh, the web a 1979 Chuvaj Russia that he gave in Yiddish at the 92nd Street Y in New York, and it also had subtitles, um, which were, which were uh, helpful as well. Um, but I, I want to look at this slicha at, um, because this opens the slichot service uh, for Ma'ari, for the evening service on Yom Kippur. Keeping in mind that Yom Kippur, um, we start well before the sun has set. Uh, and we begin with Kol Nidre. And if I saw the announcement correctly, I think Skokie Valley is going to be doing Kol Nidre on Zoom. Um, so if, uh, if, if that's the case and you're going to be participating by Zoom for Kol Nidre, please keep in mind that uh, those who will be lighting candles before Yom Kippur, if you do not light candles before Kol Nidre, or if you do light candles before Kol Nidre, which is fine, do not say the bracha of Shehefianu, uh, only say the bracha for lighting the candles of Yom Kippur, but even then, to have in mind that you're gonna be using the electronics to watch Kol Nidre, uh, so you're not really accepting upon yourself the prohibitions of Yom Kippur yet. Um, and then Shehefianu will not be recited on, I do not think Shehefianu, or Shehefianu probably will not be recited on the Zoom a uh, kol nidre because uh, with Shechianu you are fully accepting upon yourself the restrictions of Yom Kippur, so you have to wait till the Zoom is off. And you can say Shechianu already once it gets dark and when begins the evening service. Um, the evening service for Yom Kippur it's in your mafsers. Um, similarly to Rosh Hashanah, you do not say anything that cannot be said with a minion. So basically, that means for Mari, for the evening service, you do not say Barhu, which is the call to prayer, and you do not, then there's the reader's Kaddish, since there isn't an official reader for, um, for uh, because you're davening as an individual, it's just you. So there's no Chatsi Kaddish or Kaddish said after the Amida. But the rest of Mairev uh, is said, which is basically the Shema and its blessing and the um, uh, and 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 uh, the Amida. The second part of Myra, however, or the, for Myra for Yom Kippur, is um, and again the page is either uh, 102, 520 in, in scrolls, 520 in the Birnbaum, or 125 in the Koran. And again, it's on your sheets. The um, begins the Slichot section, which we do. For the second part of Myra Van Yom Kippur, we do a full slichot. What is key, and this is going to be also one of the one of the challenges of davening without a minion, is that what is key for the slichot service is two elements. One, <coughs> excuse me, the slichot themselves, meaning the poems themselves, are good to say and can be said with no problem. The problem is Slichot is really based on the notion of God granting forgiveness 
after the golden calf and we recall the episode of forgiveness being granted to the Jewish people from chapter 34 in the book of Exodus. And we recite the 13 attributes, Hashem, Hashem, Kel Rachum, Bafanum, God, God, who was gracious, merciful, etc. The problem is that this is a prayer that can only be said with a minion. So therefore, the third, you can recite the individual slichot, the individual poems or verses that they have, but when it comes to reciting the 13 attributes, you cannot recite them as an individual, okay? Some say you can recite them if you know how to read them with the Torah trope, which means you have to have the Torah trope available to you, and assuming you know how to read the Torah trope, then you could recite them as if you're reading them from the Torah, but if not, which is fine too, you can't recite them. So it does mean there's a key element of slichot that will be missing what, as we daven as individuals, not with a minion. There's nothing you can do about it. As I say, onus for manapatre, the Torah exempts you in crisis uh, situations. Um, and so, sorry for the phone ringing in the background. Um, but the, um, so you can still recite the slichot, but you can't recite those Hashem, Hashem, God, the 13 attributes, which are repeated uh, at least three times in my riff. And then we also will have them again in the, in the Nila, the concluding service, which is the same issue, um, and, and that you can't recite them. And uh, as well as an additional paragraph, which comes right after it, the whole section of the, uh, of, of the 13 attributes, and also God saying, Salakti Kidvareinu, I've forgiven them according to your words, that can only be said with a minion, and that has to be left out. So please take um, notice of that and make sure that that's clear. It is explicit in the pages I gave you. So you don't have to memorize it now. In the link with the pages of Davening at Home uh, prayer guide, it is explicit. Um, but I want to look at the first licha of Yale. And this is something based on Rusalovechik. And also, I just heard a shear from uh, J.J. Shafter, who also discussed it with uh, some different perspectives. The opening slicha on the night of Yom Kippur, all right, after we've done the Amidah, but the opening slicha, which introduces all these prayers where we're asking for forgiveness, begins, Yale tachanenu me'erev, the avo shavatenu mi'boker, and then it repeats this over and over with different words. So in English, may our tachanenu, our supplication, ascend from evening. May our cry arrive or come, v'yavo, arrive, come from morning, M-O-R-N, to have evening, morning. And he translated here, may our praise find favor by evening. But Yerae'ek here, we can use it to find favor, but don't forget its original meaning of being seen, Ra'a. So may it be seen, may it find favor by evening. Now you may also notice that in this slicha, we begin, and, 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 and the second verse is the same. Yalev, may something go up, in this case, kolenu, may our voices go up, ascend from evening, katenu may voker, may our righteousness arrive from morning, ad arev, and may our plea for redemption find favor um, at the, uh, by evening. Now it continues like this, and if you look carefully in the um, Hebrew, and you have it also, at least the art scroll, uh, has it listed that way as well. There's the basic structure is Yale. May our supplicant may something ascend. The Yavo may it arrive or come. The Yerae may it find favor or be seen. And then there's a, a then for each one there's a different thing. Our supplication, our voices, etc. But if you look at the Hebrew, it's a reverse acrostic. 
meaning it follows the Aleph, the Hebrew alphabet, but it starts at the end. It go, instead of going from Aleph through Taf, from A to Z, it goes from Z to A, from Taf through Aleph, all right? Uh, so that's a distinction that takes place. Now, Rav Soloveitchik suggests the following. He suggests that this, um, this uh, slicha is based on um, the verses from the book of Exodus, when God redeems us and God hears our prayers. So, for example, in Exodus 2.23, I'll just read it to you. It was a long time after that, the king of Egypt died and Israel groaned from the slavery. They're already slaves in Egypt in chapter 2. And then it's, it, it, uh, and it says, Vata'al shavatam ele elokim min avoda. Okay, and their, their um, cry for help from the slavery went up, rose up to God. Ta'al, ya'ale, same Hebrew word. Okay, um, you have it uh, also in, well, you have it in the following verse, Vayishma elokim et nakatam. God, uh, God heard them, uh, follows that. And you have in chapter 3, verse 9, um, you have when God is talking to Moses at the burning bush, uh, it, uh, it says as follows, the Yata, God tells Moshe, behold, now, he needs a cut in Israel, ba'a a lie. The crying of the children of Israel has reached me, has arrived, has come, ba'a lie, has come to me. All right? And back to the end of chapter 2, verse 25, um, after it says, the people groaned and it went up to God, Vayar Elohim et b'nei Yisrael vayeda Elohim. God looked upon, saw the Israelites, and God knew them. God took notice of them. In other words, these three expressions of Yale going up, Yavo coming to God, arriving, and God seeing, Okay, and let it be seen, which understood perhaps find favor, but let it be seen, all echo back to the Exodus. When our prayers, when God noticed us, God heard our prayers, took a while, um, and the process of redemption, the process of redemption began. So um, you have these three important phrases drawn from Exodus, which gives us a hope, all right, that yes, it happened in the Exodus, should happen for us now. But you also have these three time periods that are mentioned. It begins, our, we go up from the evening, it comes in the morning, and may our cry find favor or arrive, uh, our praise, sorry, find favor or arrive ad arev by evening. All right? Now, if you think about Yom Kippur, what do we do in the evening of Yom Kippur? I'm not talking about the evening of, at night of Yom Kippur, Myra the first day, but the evening after the first morning of Yom Kippur, meaning the, uh, towards the, the end of Yom Kippur, what are we doing? The end of Yom Kippur, we add an extra tefillah. We add an extra prayer that's also recited on all, all crisis fast days. For us, it's only Yom Kippur, uh, but it's all, theoretically all crisis fast days. There's an additional service and added, which is Ne'ila, all right? Um, and, and, and the Rev points out, we ask it to go up and arrive, but really that it's seen or find favors in the evening, all right? When really we reach Ne'ila, when really we, 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 we reach that final concluding service. Now, part of this may be related to that the, um, there's a debate in the Talmud, and it's discussed. Uh, the Tosavot, the medieval commentary, suggests as follows. That, I won't go into the details of the argument now. It's on uh, the Gemara and Shavuot 13a, um, is, the, is in the bottom, top of 13b for Tosavot. The Tosavot suggests that the kapara, the atonement we achieve on Yom Kippur, is only ultimately granted at the end of the day with Ne'ilah. 
Um, it only comes at the end with Neila. That's when Kapara, that's when atonement, um, that's when the power of the day um, for atonement takes place. It's only with Neila. And Rav Soloveitchik also suggests that what is bound up, as he suggests from this slicha, what is bound up here is a sense in which we require the prayers of the evening, we require the prayers of the morning, uh, M-O-R-N, in order really to get to Ne'ila. And he adds, if you haven't recited Ne'ila, excuse me, if you haven't recited Mayrev or Shachris or Mincha on Yom Kippur, morning, evening, morning or afternoon service, the Rav would argue you, you are not allowed to say Ne'ila, because Ne'ila represents that summation, that final prayer that, uh, that of, 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 of acceptance, but it must come after the other tefillot. It must come after the, uh, the other prayers. So in one of his Yortzeit rushes, it's described as follows, what Ne'ila does, okay? Um, while in the days of the temple, uh, the sacrificial service, which we'll talk about on Yom Kippur, was considered synonymous with the Yom Kippur experience. Today, our own cognitive association of Yom Kippur is that of a day devoted entirely to prayer. Right? In your, in a regular, on a regular year, you're in shul almost all day with a short break. According to Rav Soloveitchik, prayer on Yom Kippur takes a complexion fundamentally different from prayer the rest of the year. The day of Yom Kippur must be transformed into a Yom Tefillah, a day of prayer. To accomplish this transformation, the rabbis instituted the Ne'ilah service. The purpose of Ne'ilah is to request that all the previous prayers of the day be accepted, be accepted before God. Um, and so that there, the, the challenge for us is that we have to make sure that our Yom Kippur, not being in a synagogue minion setting, is a Yom Tefillah, is a day of prayer. And that the, the to, a, a toning element of Yom Kippur emerges from, comes from, the preparation of having done tshuva, of having repented, absolutely. But reaching Yom Kippur with a sense of really of davening, of prayer. The power of Yom Kippur is that it is a Yom Tfilah, a day of prayer. That we even add Ni'ilah at the end. We add an additional prayer that all our prayers be accepted. Um, we start in the evening, go to the morning, and then finally at, at the end, um, we come to the possibility of acceptance with Ne'ilah, in which Tosafot says, Kapara, atonement, is only granted on Yom Kippur at the end of the day. Well, what's the end of the day of Yom Kippur? It's Ne'ilah. That's when we recite Ne'ilah. And, 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 and J.J. Shafter pointed something out uh, earlier, which is fascinating. I mentioned the prayer Ya'aleh follows the Hebrew alphabet backwards. Okay? Each one begins, may our supplication ascend, may our cry arrive, may our voice ascend, may our righteousness arrive, may our plea for redemption find favor or be seen. And it goes the alphabet backwards till you come to Aleph, till you come to the last line. Now look at the last line. Uh, maybe on the same page, maybe the next page, I don't know. And the art scroll is on 102. The last stanza, Yala en kastenu me erev. May our outcry ascend from evening, the Yavo Lecha Baboker. And may it arrive to you is the way they translated it. But it's the there's there's no subject here. Each other couple, each other one had a subject. Our prayer, our supplication, our righteousness, our plea for redemption, whatever. Fill in the blank. You can see them. But after the when it reaches Aleph, we say, May our outcry ascend from the evening, which we begin at night, and then may it come to you in the morning, and then find favor for us by evening, but 
there's no subject. There's not, there's not an object here we're asking God to find favor. Now it's just us. Now it's just us. And so the sense in which when we get to the Aleph, when we get to the beginning point again, when hopefully, God willing, kapara, atonement is granted, what do we want? We want to be seen by God. We just want to be with. Um, we want to feel close. And so we're no longer concerned with our prayers, our pleas. It's just to be close and to feel that sense of closeness and that that becomes the goal of Ni'ilah at the end of the day. So we move from our cries going up in, 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 with Myra of the beginning through, God willing, our prayers continuing to arrive. And finally, to have the sense at the end of Yom Kippur, we have this relationship, all right? In a sense, we are really seen by God. As God, Vayara Elohim, B'nai, God saw B'nai Israel, that we want to be seen by God. And we want to have that closeness. We want to have, uh, we want to have that relationship. And it's achieved on Yom Kippur again, by Yom Kippur, the strength how we observe Yom Kippur, although we will read about the sacrificial service, but for us, Yom Kippur is a Yom Tfilah. It's not a Yom Avodah, it's not a day of temple service. We recall it, okay? And it's if through recalling, well, we don't really do it, but our words are substitute. But ultimately, it's part of the larger framework of Yom Kippur being a Yom Tfilah, a day of prayer. Okay, that's the introduction. I'll take any, for two minutes, I'll take if there's any questions or comments that are relevant. I've got a question. Yes. What does J.J. Schachter's point have to do with the tough to the olive part? Ah, that is sort of assuming that we begin, assuming the top is sort of the end of the alphabet. Um, he just sees it as, that, he sees olive as the beginning point. Maybe you can answer it's the beginning point of Kapara atonement where you can begin again. And, and that it's just the reverse. Now, if it was all of through top and there was a similar phenomenon, yeah, maybe it would work as well. Uh, but the point, the point being of this, of this process of getting to a certain point, you can argue getting to a new beginning. Okay, that's what I, would, that, that's what I think what JJ would say. That's what I think what JJ would say. Okay, Roberta. Well, what, how does the whole month of Elul play then, preparation to Elul pray, play into this? It's all preparation to reach this point. You're right. It's preparation to reach this point. Svardim, real Svardim start doing Slichas at the beginning of Rosh Chodesh Elul. Uh, that's the time Moses is on the mountain after the golden calf, praying for forgiveness. Um, to receive the second set of tablets, which he receives on Yom Kippur, with the sign of forgiveness, which are the 13 attributes. That, you're right, but it starts then. This is the concluding process. This is the conclusion. Uh, in other words, hopefully you haven't just started thinking about these things on Yom Kippur. That's why we have slichas. I mean, right, um, this is to be the concluding process. So what about for the people who don't, you know, the, those of us who are here probably have been preparing for Elul, but what about the people, I'm just bringing it to the world today, who, you know, come to the high holiday services because somehow they're connect. But they yeah, fine, good. So hopefully they get something out of it, but it ain't ideal. I mean, it's not ideal. I mean, the ideal is a different ideal, but uh, that, that people come is extremely important and valuable, and people have a legitimate experience. I'm not detracting, but or implying a detraction from the experience at all, chas v'shalom, God forbid. Uh, but ideally, and I'm talking in the ideal sense here, ideally, Yom Kippur um, requires preparation. Uh, and that's part of the preparation is tshuva, right, being worthy of kapara, being worthy of atonement. Part of it is tshuva, repentance, um, which hopefully is something that has been begun before Yom Kippur, right? To ask for forgiveness from friends, and, et cetera. Uh, as well as things, uh, you know, one has to think about. Um, and then Yom Kippur is this day of Yom Tzvilah for Kapara, for atonement, um, which is critical. Okay, one more question, Nelson. Isn't that a story of Franz Rosenzweig that was ready to convert to Christianity? 
and decided to take a less chance and go to a young keeper service and had the epiphany and revert to back. Yeah, no, for sure. I think you're pointing out something important. We don't know the possibilities of what people will experience. Um, and, 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 and living with that element of surprise, right? That's an important point you're making. Living with that element of potential spiritual surprise is very important. Um, but if you know you're supposed to prepare, better you've done some preparing, okay? Uh, that's, what I would, that's what I would say. None I of us do enough. Uh, again, none of us do enough, but uh, yeah. Okay. It's like a Diane. Uh, yeah, thank you. So to get, uh, if follow along in the sheets, we'll go through it now. This isn't radically different than Rosh Hashanah in terms of the problem of having to leave out those things which require a minion. Again, I saw that Skokie Valley will be doing Zoom, will be doing Kol Nidre on Zoom, so please join in for that. Once that is over, uh, it'll end before candle lighting. So make sure then. Uh, you can do candles, uh, and also Shafianu should be said uh, uh, in Shafianu should be said uh, uh, at once it once uh, once you know after candles once you're ready to dive in Myriv. Okay, you have Myriv the evening service there. It's the same structure, Shema surrounded by blessings. And then you have the Amidah for Yom Kippur. So again, follow along with it carefully. Make sure you say uh, the right things. Again, as with Rosh Hashanah, and this time in these 10 days of the year, Hamelech HaKadosh, God is King, etc., and the various themes that are there. Some of it you'll recognize from Rosh Hashanah. Some of it, again, of course, becomes unique uh, to Yom Kippur. And then you, when you finish uh, when you finish the Amidah, then we come to the Slichot. Now again, uh, this is done only with a minion. However, you can recite the individual Slichot, and you have it listed here, uh, what one can do. And it points out, but you don't say the 13 attributes, Hashem, Hashem, starting from the... Just if you want to see one example of this, if you look on page... Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I have it page 108 in the, um, uh, in the, uh, uh, the uh, art scroll. Um, it's going to be, I'm sorry, I don't have the, uh, some other 135. You're talking about, um, uh, El Mel Yoshev? Yeah. Yeah, 135 in the Koran. Okay, and it's also in the Birnbaum all over the place. Um, you leave that out. It says, the 13 attributes of divine mercy in the art scroll, you leave that out um, really through uh, the, through the uh, Salafi Kibarecha, through the next, through the, in, in here it'd be 108 through 112. Um, you would leave that out. Uh, and then if you want to say uh, some of this Lichot, uh, that's fine, that's fine uh, to do, and it lists the slichot here, uh, Shomei Tefillah, the introduction, Slachna, Anan, Hine, Zakor. It, it lists exactly what you can recite and choose to recite uh, individually. Uh, but again, the key part, unfortunately, you can't say, in, or unless you read the 13 attributes in Torah Trope and you know how to read Torah Trope. Um, that's what we have for Myriv, but please remember at the end of Myriv, uh, you actually, it's, I don't think it's printed here, but it should be, um, unless I'm missing a page. Um, does it, uh, oh, I, hold it, no wonder why I'm missing a page. Um, I'm sorry, mine is a little bit out of old order. Um, well, okay, uh, you would continue, uh, you hopefully will have it, I'm unfortunately missing a page. Um, but after you, after the Slichot, um, you would do Avinu Malkenu, uh, which is on 144, 
um, in the uh, in the art scroll. Um, wait, I hear my wife. My wife has saved me. She's brought me a page. Thank you, dear. Um, so you have, anyway, continue sort of with my review. Again, it lists what you do and what you don't do. Uh, and it says Avinu Malkeinu, 144, et cetera. Now I want to raise one complication. Um, one of the unique, one of the things we do in the Amidah, in each Amidah we will recite individually on Yom Kippur. Mayrev, Shachris, Mincha, Musaf, Mincha, and the Ila, there is a section of confession. Vidui, Ashamnu, Bagadnu, right? We've sinned. The list of all chaits, which lists the sins in detail. Most people say that if you're, if you're not with a minion, let me be clear, you do it in your own individual Amidah, that's fine. But it is repeated in the repetition of the Amidah in the morning, uh, Musaf, Mincha, and Ni'ila. Most people say you do not do it. In other words, we end up doing it five times. Once at Mayrib, once at, Sh at, at Shachrit in the morning, once at Musaf, which is three, Mincha is four, Ni'ila is five. Only in our private Amidah. All right, only in our private Amidah. It is part of the repetition of the Amidah. It is integrated into the repetition of the Amidah in the middle of it. But that you only say when there is a minion. All right, when there is a minion. That is most opinions. And it even says so on our sheet on the second page. We do not repeat the Vidui, the confessional part of the serveness. Ashamnu al which we already recited in the silent Amida. However, just to mention, there is one opinion that suggests you can even, because you do it if you, uh, you would do it 10 times uh, during in, in Myriv and then when's in the sleep code. Now, when you have a minion, you do it 10 times. There's one opinion that suggests even an individual should do it not just the five times in the Amidah, but should add five others. Um, most people I spoke to said not to, or if you want to, okay. Um, but if you don't want to confuse yourselves, it's fine just to do it in the silent Amidah. Okay, but I did want to, want to, I did want to point that out, that there was one opinion, but most people said, uh, said not to do it. So again, following along this chart will tell you what parts of the slichot at my review can do and what parts you shouldn't do. Just follow the just follow the instructions. All right. But again, keep in mind with Yom Kippur, confession is an important part, and we do it during the Amida. Right. That's an important part uh, of Yom of Yom Kippur. Okay. That's the evening service. Shachari, uh, service during the day on the next page. Very similar to Rosh Hashanah. All right. We do Psuke de Zimra, uh, the introductory uh, Psalms. Uh, do not feel you have to do all of it. What counts, what's really important is Baruch Sha'amar, the blessing, Nishmat, uh, uh, which. Uh, comes towards the end of it, and then HaMelech, the, uh, what comes after Nishmat and what comes after the middle part, do as much as you want. This also has uh, the additional pieces. There's a tradition of singing. They also had this Rosh Hashanah, Shira Yichud. It's in, your, it's in your books. Feel free, again, what you don't know in Hebrew, look at the English, it's, that's what it's there for. Shira Kavod, it's Anim Zemirot, you can recite. Uh, again, uh, you want to sing it, uh, feel free. Again, all the time, if there are tunes of Yom Kippur you remember, feel free to sing. Shir Shel Yom, the psalm for the day. Ladavid Ori, the psalm 27 we recite during this time of the year. Uh, and then you have uh, the rest of Suke de Zimra with the pages there. 
Um, and then at the end, you add Shira Malot, again, the special psalm. And then you have Shafrit, which again is the blessings, Shema and its blessings, okay? There's no Barhu. You can't do Chatzi Kaddish, the half Kaddish, because you don't have a minion. So, but you do the, everything else with uh, Shacharit. It has the pages there. Um, and then you come to the individual Amida and you recite the individual Amida. Um, and then Shacharit is over after that. Then you're done because there's no, there's a very long repetition, but we don't have, we're not in a minion setting, so we can't do the repetition. Um, there is then some suggestions here, although we do not repeat the Amidah, you're welcome to recite the following Piyutim and Slichot taken from there, which this synagogue traditionally chants together, which we took this from, and so do most synagogues. And so you have them there with the pages. That's optional. Uh, please feel free to do it. Sing it as you will. Um, and uh, it's fine to do. Uh, and I think we'll add um, to Yom Kippur. And quite frankly, there's not much else to do on Yom Kippur. Uh, that's the challenge for us because we're to make it a Yom Tefillah when a much shorter service. So uh, that requires a certain amount of effort and work for sure. And then, uh, then, um, then you have, um, I'm sorry, my pages, I kind of have this here. Um, and then you have um, the uh, more that one can say. Uh, you have the slichot there, the El Oref Din is popular. And then you have also, uh, it continues with the, you get into the vidui, the confession part of the uh, repetition. Where again, we don't do the confession, but we can do say still Shmat Voleinu, uh, God, hear our prayers. Ki anu amecha, ki anu amecha, da 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 So sing it at home, either you're on key or off key, but that's always popular if you think of being in shul. Everyone always sings that, and it's very poignant. Uh, what is our relationship with God? We're your people, you're our God, we're your sheep, you're our shepherd. It's, it's, it's a lovely thing to be able to sing. Again, according to most opinions, you leave out the confession. You certainly leave, uh, well, you leave out the confessional part, but you do Avinu Malkeinu. Okay, Avinu Malkeinu is listed there. That's something you should do. Uh, it's not optional. You should do Avinu Malkeinu. Um, and then uh, you finish, completely finish Shacharit, the morning service. Um, it is fine, of course, to look over the Torah reading, to read the Haftorah. I highly suggest it. The Torah reading focuses on the description of the temple worship, the Avoda, how Yom Kippur was observed in the Mishkan, in the sanctuary, which later becomes the temple. Um, and the Haftor is, of course, from Isaiah, which reminds us that if you're only focused on the temple, you're missing something. Yom Kippur is, of course, also about and finding God's presence and God saying, Hineni is when you, when you lead a genuine ethical life when you've turned out. All right, part of Yom Kippur is turning in. It's focusing into the Mishkan. It's focusing in to the Holy of Holies. It's focusing in to the most sacred. But the Haftorah comes and says, yeah, but you got to focus out. Because even while you're focusing in the most sacred, you have to focus out um, to others as well. All right? And that's when God's presence will be known. God says, he named me. Um, somewhat similar to Hana, when we talked about Hana. Hana focuses on her prayer for his son, but her joyous song afterwards is something which is not focusing on her, it's something which is focusing out what can be better for the Jewish people and for that matter, the whole world. So they're similar with the Torah reading for young people are very important. Uh, those of you who recite, who want to recite Yisker, it then says you can recite Yisker. The shul may be having a separate, some shuls are doing Yiskers before Yom Kippur. 
so you can check that. I don't remember. Spokie Valley might be doing it. I don't remember. Um, but Yisker does not require a minion. So just follow what it says in the book. But Yisker does not require a minion. Um, but you should, if you haven't said it before, certainly say it. Uh, Yom Kippur, we're, we're not only, it's for ourselves, it's recalling um, our, our, our predecessors. That's very much part of who we are. All right. After that, uh, we have Ashrei, uh, which we have in, in before any Musaf service. And then you have the Musaf Amida. Uh, again, individually recited. Same problem afterwards. We can't do the repetition of the Amida. We don't have a minion. But as it says here, here are things you can do together at home, individually or with a spouse or with kids. And you have the pages here of the various PU team that can be done. Um, and you can pick and choose. Certainly Yunus Anatolkif is good uh, to do. And you have it listed here. But on the uh, sixth one on the list on that, on the next, on that page, it says the Avoda. You see that? 554 to 572, 811 to 827 or 879, 901, depending which prayer book you have. I would highly recommend you read the Avoda. You can't act it out, but you can certainly read it. This is the description. Um, this is a somewhat poetic description, perhaps, of uh, the rabbinic understanding of what took place in the Beit HaMikdash in the temple, what was the sacrificial worship that took place? Um, in many ways, it's really a story of the Kohen Gadol, the high priest leaving his house a week before Yom Kippur, coming to God's house on that week before, preparing, going into the inner sanctum of God's house alone, right? into the Holy of Holies, um, the possibility of kapara, of atonement being achieved, the people experiencing and hearing God's ineffable name be pronounced. Um, and then the end is the Kohen goes home. He returns to his house, okay? The Kohen goes home and returns to his house. On some level, during a normal year, we would leave our house to go to shul on Yom Kippur. Yeah, we come back to sleep, but we're mostly in shul on Yom Kippur. We would leave our house, go to, as such, God's house, the synagogue, if I can use that term, and then the joy of then coming home after Yom Kippur. That's going to be harder for us because we're all staying in the same house uh, individually. We're going to be in our individual homes. Um, so you, one has to keep in mind to consider Yom Kippur as part of this journey to the sacred and coming home afterwards with joy. Um, and, 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 and remember, and, and, and being able to do that even in the context of your own home. It's a huge challenge for sure. Huge challenge. But that's part of, I think, thinking about the journey one takes on Yom Kippur. All right, after the Avoda, we have the Slichot, which in this case is the story of the 10 martyrs, all right? Rav Soloveitchik talks about this as a moment of mourning. Um, he, he talks about the description of the Avoda service as an evoking through our words and the imagination, the experience of being in the temple the experience of seeing the high priest emerging, healthy, radiating, it's joy, and the recognition that with all the imagination we have, it's not our reality. Um, and immediately following that, there's, it, it moves from this sort of joy of the avoda, of remembering that what was in the temple to sadness and tragedy and almost mourning, M-O-U-R, at least briefly, particularly with that slicha of the 10 martyrs, all right? Um, and again, I highly advise you look at that and read that. The, the advantage, you're not in a rush. Um, you can study it, uh, look at some commentaries on it, 
um, and, 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 and it moves from this enthusiasm imagined high to a sense of tragic lowness. Okay, and then it can, and then it says at the end of Musa, if you want to do Hayam Tiyam Seinu, uh, you know, Hayam Tiyam Seinu, Amen. And it's very short with Amen. If you know a tune, feel free to, uh, of course, to sing it. Um, so that's Musa. Uh, then you may have time to take a break, but you can try to spend the day still focused on Yom Kippur. Um, you want to go outside, take a short walk, uh, that may be good for you to do as well. Just obviously do it carefully. We then come to Mincha. Now Mincha begins with Torah reading, and then we read Machter Yonah, the book of Jonah. We can't do that, but you can certainly look at the Torah reading, and you can certainly read the book of Jonah. Uh, Jonah is a wonderful story. You can, I suggest, for Yom Kippur, if there's commentaries, there's a ton of stuff on the web that you feel free to download some short essays about Jonah and to study them on Yom Kippur. That would be a good way to read them and to share with each other and to uh, appreciate the story. And then following that, um, you have the Amidah. You have, of course, the individual Amidah. Again, we don't do the repetition, but here we have on the next page some things that you certainly can do uh, similar to what one would have done in Musa for Shachri, uh, Zechor remembers the Shema Koleinu, those uh, individual verses of God hear our voice, sing again Ki Anu Amecha, you can also do Mi El Kamocha, which is in Mincha specifically, and then again, um, you can do Avinu Malkeinu at the end, you should do Avinu Malkeinu. Uh, Birnbaum for some reason doesn't have Avinu Malkeinu, but the other Mahsarim do. So you should do a Vinu Malkenu at the end of Mincha. That's, uh, that's not really optional. And then you come to Ni'ila. Now Ni'ila, um, I highly suggest doing this towards the end of the day. In other words, you start Ni'ila before sundown. Absolutely, start Ni'ila before sundown. Um, and if you end Ni'ila before it gets dark, you can't conclude Jum Kippur. Uh, you, you know, um, you still have to wait till it gets dark. So, but I would absolutely start in the Ela before sundown. And again, uh, do it slowly. Now, the bulk of the Ela is again, Slichot and the 13 attributes. We don't have that. You can still recite the Slichot, uh, but you can't do the 13 attributes, and that's just the way it is. Um, so you would do the Ashrei Uvalitzion, as it describes, the Amida individually. Then it has the note, you can't do the 13 attributes. But you can do these other elements of Ni'ila. Um, and certainly feel free to, uh, to do them. And I think you'll certainly have time. Ki Anu Amecha, you can again sing again. Avinu Malkenu, you can really say it extra special slowly. You don't have to mumble Avinu Malkenu. You can recite each one, you know, out loud as you could do for all of Yom Kippur. And then if it's already time, and I assume Skokie Valley is listing the times. I don't have them handy. But it's if already time when Yom Kippur, when you can recite these, um, then you do, as the end of Ne'ila, you do Shema Yisrael once. Baruch Shem Kovod Mahotol Olam Boed three times. And then Hashem Hu Elokim, the Lord is God, you do seven times. Um, and, uh, and, and that's that climactic end of, uh, of Yom Kippur. If you have a shofar, uh, you should certainly blow shofar then, again, assuming it's the proper time uh, and Yom Kippur has actually ended. Uh, that, we're, that it's time when you can blow shofar. And again, Skokie Valley will have uh, the times listed. Um, so uh, you would certainly do that then and end. And uh, then you have Lashana Bab Yerushalayim. You can sing, you can dance. Um, and then comes Myra for the end of Yom Kippur with just a standard Myra of the Shema, the Amida, etc. And then, uh, you know, Havdalah, and uh, if you want, you can also do the prayer of welcoming the new, uh, the new moon, uh, because we, uh, 
uh, which is a tradition. It don't, it's not listed here, it's in uh, the Sidurim. Um, but again, Havdalash can only be done when Yom Kippur is over. You should remember before Yom Kippur to light a Yurtzeit candle. That's for those, certainly if you have a Yurtzeit, but secondly, I mean, I have a Yurtzeit, you know, I say Yisker, you light a candle anyway, but also you're going to make a blessing for Havdalah on wine and also for a candle. You don't make a blessing on spices because theoretically you haven't eaten on Yom Kippur, you fasted. However, you haven't been able to use light. It's like Shabbat like that. So then you would make a uh, use, the tradition is to light the Havdalah candle from a pre-existing light. Where do you have a pre-existing light? You light something before Yom Kippur, and then you use that to light the hav, the, to light the Havdalah candle. Okay, so that is the summary. Again, the challenge is to prepare off the web if you're looking for you know commentaries, etc. Just do searches. Tons of stuff is there, but the challenge is. Um, it, we can't be passive um, because we can't get the shul. Um, we have to do it on our own. We have to be active. Yom Kippur is Rav described, the salvation described as a Yom Tfilah. Uh, it's a Yom Tfilah, it's a day of prayer that builds to Ni'ila where God willing our prayers have been accepted and kapara and atonement is granted. Um, this is going to require extra special effort to evoke this to daven at home. Um, again, in shul, there may be a break for a couple of hours, but you're sitting in shul, you're with everyone. At home, you may have a longer break. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, if you're able to have a short break because you've really been focusing on the machzer, all, all blessings to you. Um, but to make the effort that it's, uh, that it's Jim Kipper. Okay, although we won't be able to have the ideal experience, it is still a Yom Kippur experience and a very important experience for Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is the day of God gave us the second tablets after Moses smashed them with the golden calf. It's the day of the reconciliation of the Jewish people and God. We can't say the 13 attributes, but they're the um, expression of that. Um, it's a day in which that sense of as the era s so let it be seen right we want to see you we want to have that sense it's not an accident that the last three words of neila aside from the kaddish at the end and next year in jerusalem which is not really part of it but the last three words of neila are hashem hu elokim that we recite seven times those three words the lord is god are taken from the story of elijah when, the, uh, when he has a contest with the prophets of Baal, of whose sacrifice will be lit by a fire from God. It's described in the Bible. Um, and, um, and it's when the Jewish people are really uh, worshiping more, Baal more than God. Um, but the prophets of Baal, of course, we wrote the story, they don't succeed. Um, but, um, uh, Elijah even adds water to his uh, altar, you know, to show, oh, it's really going to be a miracle. And fire comes down from heaven, from Shemayim, and lights Elijah's altar. And the people then say, Hashem Elohim, the Lord is God. They've seen God, or they've seen the miracle of God, etc. But it ends, Yom Kippur ends with those verses of people seeing the power of God. For us, the power of God is not found in fires lighting, miraculously lighting altars. For us, the power of God is, is, is we find through observing Yom Kippur and having a sense of achieving kapara, of achieving atonement, which allows us to begin again. It, it gets us back to Aleph. It gets us back to the beginning where we can begin again and look forward to a, a, a new year, um, look forward to trying our best to be not, I don't know how many people I was listening in or myself are going to be unbelievable tzaddikim in the coming year. 
but to try to be better than who we are. And particularly when we mess up, to be aware of it and to apologize. If, if you leave Yom Kippur with the sense, you know what, I know I'm not perfect, I know I'm gonna mess up, I may have a short temper, I may get upset by this, I may get upset by that, you may irritate me when you, you may irritate you do that, but at least recognize when you're screwing up. Um, that's the gift of kapara, that's the gift of atonement. It allows us to begin again, and hopefully we can begin again with the recognition of when we mess up, when we don't do what we're supposed to be doing, whether ritually or in, or in an interpersonal relationship, that we're able to acknowledge that and say, oops, I screwed up. Um, and recognizing when you screw up is one of the most difficult, one of the most important things you can do. If you're lucky, you're married to, to someone like my wife who tells me when I mess up. And I say that doesn't, and, and, and she's not being critical. She tells me lovingly because she cares. Um, so that's what we can try to think about and God willing achieve, um, even as we're isolated, even as we're alone individually, but at least part of the collective of the Jewish people celebrating Yom Kippur. All right, I want to dive in my and go to Slicha, so I'm sorry I don't have time for questions. If you have any questions, just write me at michaelbolinsky at gmail.com. Please feel free. Um, thanks for listening. I hope this was helpful. Um, it is actually really helpful for me. So Laila Tov, uh, a Gemar Tov should be a good year for all on an easy fast. Thanks. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you, Michael.
Is anybody here? Ah, okay. Um, Shanatova. <laughs> Shanatova. Hi, Rivka. We're going to dive in. Uh, we're going to dive in. You're welcome to stay on. Okay. 